Hey y'all, welcome back to the College Train YouTube channel. Before we get started today, remember to subscribe below to make sure you don't miss any of our top college application tips or test prep strategies. And if you find today's video helpful, go ahead and click the like button below and share it with your friends on social media so they too can learn more about the NESCACs. Thanks and let's get started. So today we're gonna to talk about the NESCAC schools. If you've never heard of this group of schools, collectively known by the acronym for their athletic conference, today is your day to learn all that you need to know, including what are these schools? What should you know about them before applying? And are they a good fit for you? Well, we'll answer these questions and more in today's video, so let's hop right in and get started. The first question that you're probably wondering is very basic. What are the NESCACs? Well, if you're watching this video, you probably have heard of the NESCAC schools in some capacity, but not everyone knows exactly what the term stands for and which colleges it includes. So before we move on, let's talk about exactly what the NESCACs are. NESCAC stands for the New England Small College Athletic Conference. It includes a group of 11 extremely selective liberal arts colleges and universities, and they all have similar beliefs regarding college athletics. In 1971, these 11 schools created the NESCAC in response to their concern for the direction of college athletic programs. Their goal was to keep a proper perspective of the role that sports play in higher education, allowing students to pursue the sports they love while still holding academics as the focus of the college experience. Just like the Ivy League, the term NESCAC officially refers to an athletic conference, but it's more colloquially used to broadly refer to the schools that it includes, not just about their athletics programs. After all, these schools have a lot more in common than just sports teams and an athletic philosophy, as you're gonna hear about later on in this video. First though, let's clarify which are these 11 schools that are in the NESCAC. They are Amherst College, Bates College, Bowdoin College, Colby College, Connecticut College, Hamilton College, Middlebury College, Trinity College, Tufts University, Wesleyan University, and Williams College. Sometimes people use the term NESCAC and the term Little Ivies interchangeably, but these two designations are actually not the same. The NESCAC is that athletic conference that we talked about before, while the Little Ivies are a group of schools that share similar traits with the Ivy League, particularly academic rigor and selective admissions rates. All of the schools in the NESCAC are also considered Little Ivies, but the Little Ivies does include an additional seven colleges that are not part of the NESCAC. NESCAC Athletics. In terms of athletics, NESCAC schools all compete in the NCAA Division III League. This is the lowest level of competitive college athletics, and student athletes participate only during their sports season. For the student who excels in both academics and athletics, a NESCAC school could be a great fit because you can participate in multiple sports while receiving a top-notch education. Next question, what else do NESCAC schools have in common? Well, aside from athletics, NESCAC schools have a number of other defining features. Similar to the Ivy League, NESCAC schools tend to be pretty old, exclusive, academically competitive, and highly regarded. Unlike the Ivy League, though, NESCAC schools are typically quite small, they're in more rural environments, and they're really focused on liberal arts. The one exception to that is Tufts University, which total enrollment has now grown to nearly 12,000 students. NESCAC schools are highly selective and are competitively ranked. They account for eight of the top 25 liberal arts colleges in the US News and World Reports list of best national liberal arts schools, with Williams and Amherst taking number one and number two. The smaller populations and smaller campuses at NESCAC schools can often facilitate productive and consistent relationships between professors and students. Williams, for example, has about one third as many undergrads as Harvard, and such a close-knit campus can prevent students from falling through the cracks. According to US News, five Little Ivies are in the top 30 on their list of schools with the highest four-year graduation rates. NESCAC schools might also present college-bound students with an easier path to being accepted into a top school. For example, the average SAT score of a matriculated Harvard student in 2016 through 17 was between 710 and 800 in reading and writing and 720 and 800 in math. At Williams, though, the average scores were between 670 and 770 in reading and writing and 660 and 770 in math. NESCAC schools also have higher acceptance rates than what's typically found at Ivy League schools. The Little Three, which is a moniker given to Amherst, Wesleyan, and Williams due to their participation together in a triangular athletic league dating back to 1899, have acceptance rates of 13% at Amherst, 17% at Wesleyan, and 13% at Williams. For comparison, the acceptance rates at the Big Three are only 5% at Harvard, 5% at Princeton, and 6% at Yale. The schools of the NESCAC may provide an easier path to admission than comparable Ivy League institutions, but they are still some of the nation's top and 
best liberal arts colleges. If you're considering applying to one of the NESCAC schools, well, we can help. Check the comments section of this video for many of our posts with more info about all the NESCAC schools. Or for more general guidance on building a strong college application, visit us online at app.collegevine.com. That's it for today. Thanks for visiting our YouTube channel. And if you're applying to college this season, particularly applying to a NESCAC school, best of luck.